Hi everybody, join me and come and learn how to block your knitting and crochet projects. Let's get started. Right, let's talk about blocking. Blocking is the way that we can fix things like curly stockinette or lace that's a bit bunched up. And there are three ways I'm going to show you how to block today. Um, one of them is wet blocking, where we just immerse the fabric into some water. The second way is to use a spray mister. And the third way is to use a steam iron. Now, a word of warning, if you're going to use steam, and when we get to steam, we'll talk about it, you must never let the iron actually touch your work, no matter what the fibre. But we'll get there when we talk about steam blocking. So I'm going to use these swatches that I've made. I've got a little crocheted granny square. I've got a bit of lace, a bit of some eyelets and a little bit with a rib. I'm using some actually this is really cheap kids sort of play matting. You don't have to use this. You don't have to use anything on the bottom apart from a couple of old, old towels if you don't want to. This is quite handy because it's it's cheap and you can stick lots of pins in it or you can buy purpose made blocking mats, um, or as I say, just use some old towels. Um, but you will need to have something to block your work on, some pins, and for this I'm using some long pins. The ideal is to use some rust free pins. You can buy them on the Lovecraft site, um, or just any sort of long pins will do. Um, I've got a little mister with some water in it, um, a towel and some warm water for soaking. So let's get started and have a look at the sort of total immersion wet blocking. Okay, let me show you how to wet block uh, your knitting or your crochet. The first, um, the easiest way to explain this is that we're going to absolutely dunk our work into some warm water. You can add into here some softener if you want. There's a special sort of wool wash that's no rinse to give your knitting um your fabric a lovely smell but it's not really necessary you can just use plain warm water and that's fine not i mean lukewarm certainly not any hotter than that and what blocking fixes is things like this it's where your knitting starts to curl or the lace when you knit it lace is often just all sort of bunched up and we need to make that pattern really show up so let's start with just a piece of plain old stocking stitch. So I'm going to take this bit of stocking stitch um, swatch and I'm going to put it the whole thing into this water. Push it into the water so it just gets thoroughly wet. Now there's no real need to leave it in there I think. Just give it a gentle squeeze out as long as it's completely wet. Try and get most of the water out but whatever you do don't wring it out. Just make sure that it's thoroughly damp. And I'm going to do the same thing here with my knitted swatch. I'm using, um, a, this is a wool yarn, this is Cashmino Aran, but with any yarn this is the way that you do it. So just wet it in, completely wet, so that it gets nice and soaks up all the water. And then just give it a gentle squeeze out. Don't wring it out, don't squidge it out, because there's other ways of getting the water out. So when it's nice and wet, pop it onto your towel and I'll move that out of the way. Now before we start blocking it, what we're going to do is to use the towel to get the bulk of the moisture out. So I'm just going to fold that towel down and give it a really good press. You can roll it to get the water out, all sorts of things. Some people would roll it all up and walk along it, but that's I don't quite want to be that extreme with a small spotch. But these now now that I've blocked them out a little bit, I've blotted the water off, they're just nicely damp. So I'm going to move them over, now that they're a little bit damp, onto my blocking board and just remove that towel. Now, if you knit something or you crochet something and it actually comes up as being a bit too small, this is where blocking can solve a multitude of problems. If your stitches are a bit uneven, if it's a bit sort of wonky and not quite right, this is where you can correct it. So the first thing I'm going to do is to show you how to block just this piece of stocking stitch that's curled. So first of all, with your nice long pins, just pin the edges in. And you see why it's nice to have a nice long pin, because then you can see 
where your pins are, you're not gonna step on them. If you've got normal pins, that's okay. But I just want to show you. So I'm just going to pin the four edges down. Now, what's interesting here is that if I wanted this to be a certain size, I could take a ruler, and please excuse my daughter's pink school ruler. I could take my ruler and say I wanted this to be another inch wider or half an inch wider, I could actually stretch it. Stretch it to be a little bit bigger and then pin that in. And so this is the ideal sort of scenario. If you knit something and it's a bit too snug, you can actually stretch it to fit. A solemn warning though, this does not work the other way. So you can make things bigger, but you can't make things smaller. So let's leave it at that size then. And it's the same thing with the length. If you want it to be a certain length, you can stretch your knitting up a little bit to make it bigger. Um, and so once you've pinned in the corners, then you can just use the same pins and just pin down to make sure that you get a straight edge. And, you know, the more pins you've got, the more you can do this. So I'm going to do a similar thing with our little block of lace. I'm just going to whiz that around so you can see. So when you knit lace, and this is nice and damp, it often curls up and you just can't see the lace pattern. So the lovely thing about this is, if you've got points like I have here, and you'll be amazed at how lovely this looks, I'm just going to bring these little lace points out. Look at this, it's so pretty. And you know, once you've started pinning it out, you fiddle with it afterwards. So just get a few pins in and remember this is quite damp still. Can you see how the lace is really starting to show? The pattern's really starting to come out. And all the eyelets, all the sort of little, that one's a little bit wider there, are beginning to show as the lace blocks out. So, when you knit a shawl or something beautiful like that, you find that you know it can get very scrumply and you think gosh where's that lace pattern but it's there but you just need to block it out so there I have blocked out and pinned just a piece of stocking stitch and a piece of lace using the wet blocking technique so you just immerse it in the water pat it dry with a towel and then pin it out now this will need to set until it's dry and that might take a day, might take a couple of days. What happens is, is that the fibers in the yarn have a memory and then they will remember this setup. They'll dry like this and it'll stay. When you work with acrylic yarn, this method can work too. You might need a little bit longer. So it might need to start off a bit wetter, maybe dry for a bit longer, but it certainly works very well with wool, alpaca and any animal fibres. So that is how we use wet blocking. Next, let's have a look at wet blocking using just a, a misting spray. Now this is just a bottle with water in it, a spray bottle. You, if you wanted to, you could put a bit of um, eucalan or some other wool wash or something in there. Um, there are lots of really great uh, eucalan, um, lots of them, uh, wool washes that are no rinse so you don't have to rinse them afterwards it just gives your knits a, or your crochet a gorgeous smell um, so I've done here a little bit of stocking stitch with some eyelet patterns in it and you can see that it's very screwed, screwed up so we're going to have a go at that one and also I have here a granny square and sometimes granny squares they might go in a bit they might just get a bit scrumply they look nicer when they're blocked and they're really pulled out so they look pretty. And here I've got a little swatch of just some garter stitch with a rib. And the reason I've done this is to show you, so this is with the same size needle, nothing's changed, just the rib and then the garter stitch on top. If you start blocking this and pulling the rib out, you're gonna lose all the elasticity. So when you are blocking a sweater, <coughs> excuse me, a jumper or a sweater or a cardigan, always try and avoid blocking the ribs because you want the ribs to have stretch in them. 
you don't want them pulled out. So if you're blocking something like this, always start blocking from the rib up. And that also goes for any rib along the bottom and around collars and button bands. Just be careful not to stretch those out of shape. So I'm going to do the, let's do the crochet with some spray blocking. So here, very sort of similar process to wet blocking really when you immerse everything, but I'm just going to take my little spray and I'm going to spray my little square until it's really quite damp. And the good thing about this, if you're nervous about making something completely saturated, this one is just a little bit less, uh, you know, less dramatic. And some things might not need as much blocking or as much water. And you might not need them to sit for too long if it's not a complicated thing. So I've got there my water and then we go back in. I'm going to pop it up here. I'm going to go back in with our pins. Now I'm just going to give that a little dry off the mat. Now Granny Square, first thing you really want to set is the corners. And the, the reason that it's a really good idea to block the Granny Squares and actually block your granny squares before you start stitching them together. And this is the same for any kind of motif um, for a modular blanket, for example, is that you want all of your blanket squares or granny squares to be the same size so that when you stitch them together, they're all right. And this is your moment, if you want to, to change the size of them. So say, for example, that I I'm working my granny squares and this one here is seven and a half centimetres, but really I want that extra half an inch, I want an extra half a centimetre, I want it to be a little bit bigger. What you can do is just bring that until you measure it up against the eight. And then I'm going to come across here and think, right, where's my eight? It's going to be about there. So I'm going to I'm going to grab another pin to do this. I'm just going to bring that granny square over there to the eight, and then I'm going to measure up here for an eight. Actually, that is an eight. And then I think that one just needs to square up a bit. The point here is you can, and it's always good to use lots of pins. Don't be afraid to not, you know, to not use very many pins. You can use as many as you like to, to get it into the shape that you want it to be. The thing here is that you're able to influence the shape of the granny square and how open it is. Or indeed, if you don't want it to shrink very much, or you don't want it to expand very much, keep it in its small state. Again, just to make it absolutely clear, these things can get bigger, but they can't get smaller. So. That's how we'd block a granny square using a friendly Mr. Bottle. So our last method to look at blocking is to use steam. So we're just gonna use a, just a general steam iron for this, but I must caution <laughs> great care, mostly because A, you know, the steam is very hot, you could burn yourself. You must make sure never to touch the iron to the actual fabric of your knitting or crochet and um, just the steam will do the work so you don't actually need to touch the iron at all. If you put the iron onto this kind of fabric which has got wool in it, it'll just flatten the stitches and make it horrible. If you put your iron onto acrylic yarn, it will melt it and so you completely wreck it whichever way you do it. So only steam is what we're saying here. So what I'm gonna do and please excuse the noise of my iron here, but I'm just going to, with my steam button, put some steam, hover it over the top. And actually, really what we're doing, we're adding steam just over the top and you can see how it's going. It's a bit of steam and warmth. And you know, it feels like I'm in, in, in the Wild West in a film in a log cabin, actually, with the wind. <laughs> with the wind. There we go. Woo. So I just put lots of steam on there. The theory behind this is 
that it's warm water steam rather than you know just putting warm water from a bowl so I've just gently steamed that now remember it's going to be quite warm that piece of yarn because you've been putting some hot steam on it you can see already that the stocking stitch is starting to uncurl so we pop our pins in while it's warm there we go to pin it out and I'm just going to pin out these little eyelet patterns so you can see it a little bit more Um, take your time with this pinning, especially if it is a piece of lace, because you really want to get every little, nice little bit of, you know, feature of the pattern out. And you might find that you, you know, you're repinning things a few different times. So once I've got my pins in there, put one more there. I'm actually going to give it another little blast of steam with the pins in. So excuse the noise, here we go again. There we go. Now remember, these pins are going to be hot, but you can see that that's, the fibres have immediately started to relax. So, this is how we wet block with steam. So these are the different ways that we've looked at blocking. These two have been wet blocks, so we've immersed them and then pinned them out. This one we've used a spray bottle just to spray it, dampen it down and pin it out. And this one we've used steam. So the next job is to leave these swatches overnight until they're completely dry, and then we'll have a look at them in the morning. Right, so here we are, 24 hours later. And I'm going to take the pins out and just show you. So most impressive, I think, here is this crumply bit of lace. If you remember us pinning this one out. And look at that. It's completely set so that if that's on the bottom of a garment, or I think that was in the, actually a pattern from the bottom of a garment, um, it just it knows its shape and it stays like that. So here we've got a little bit of stocking stitch that was wet blocked, not curling up. And the stitches are beautifully even. So that's really great. And then over here, this is our spray blocked little uh, granny square. And we reshaped this one to change its size slightly. So again, it just sort of sets the stitches. It makes things I don't know, it makes things look more finished blocking. And especially when you've got a garment and it's got seams and you know, maybe bits of it look a bit lumpy. When you block something, the stitches relax, the fibers relax, and everything just looks more finished. Um, so in conclusion, let's just have a look at these eyelets. If you're going to block natural fibres, you're going to have a lot more success than acrylics because the natural fibres have a memory and they can remember, you know, the, the fibres stretch and set and they'll stay like that. And if you do this with acrylic yarn, it works to a degree. So it's a good thing to do, especially, say, for example, with granny squares where you're going to sew them all together and you want them all the right size. and. And, and nicely finished and shaped. Um, so you can block acrylic yarn. I would always stick to wet blocking with acrylic yarn or spray blocking and not steam because if you steam it, you might melt it. But that is how you block something. And it really does make a great finish for any garment and takes it from, you know, something that you've had scrambled up in a bag when you haven't finished it. Well, that's probably me. Um, to something absolutely beautiful and wearable. Happy blocking. So that is how you block your knitting and crochet projects. It's a really worthwhile thing to do. It just finishes things off really beautifully. If you've got any questions or if you'd like to tell me anything about your blocking, leave me a comment underneath. Don't forget to subscribe to the Lovecrafts channel and keep an eye out for more exciting crafting videos soon. Happy making. <laughs>